Hello, my name's Lewis Dartnell. I'm a professor at the University of Westminster, and I'm the author of this new book, Being Human, How Our Biology Shaped World History. I just wanted to put into context uh, this new book very briefly by talking about my last two books to, to explain my line of thought, if you like. The knowledge was all about how you could go about rebooting civilization after some kind of apocalypse. And I use this conceit, the notion of the loss of everything that we just take for granted in our everyday lives to peer behind the scenes of the modern world, see how everything is made, how it's done, how it all works. In Origins, I'm pulling back up on that perspective even further and looking at not how human ingenuity and resourcefulness built the world that we live in, but how features of the planet itself that we live on. Features of planet Earth, from plate tectonics and continental drift, to the churning of the atmosphere high above our heads, to where different metals or natural resources are found around the world, and how those have had an impact on the development of different cultures and civilizations and the shape of the world that we find today. Now, in being human, I'm looking at how fundamental features of us have played a crucial role in history. Aspects of us as animals, as, as a species, are intrinsic aspects of our humanness. And then following that chain of cause and effect from something fundamental about us and how we work to their long-running consequences through history. So, for example, the first chapter looks at our evolution and how we became both brainy and bipedal. How we became very intelligent, but also able to walk around on two legs. And that had a significant impact on the birthing process of each of us, which in turn led to the development of romantic love in our species, but also the human family. And throughout history, we've come to pass on not only possessions down the generations within a family, but also power. And monarchies exploited that to consolidate and expand their influence, leading to the awful unintended consequences for the Habsburg dynasty. The Spanish Habsburgs effectively collapsed because of a biological failing. We also look at disease and how that stops the proper functioning of our body and see how, for instance, it was tropical disease in Central America that led to the union of England and Scotland in the early 1700s. We also look at how the story of how as intelligent, conscious beings, we actively seek out ways to change the functioning of our brain to change our minds with substances like alcohol or caffeine, and nicotine or opium through history and how these mind-altering addictive substances has had profound impacts and influences through the playing out of world history. We also see how a particular mutation, a single spelling mistake in our DNA had an enormous influence through centuries of the age of sail and astonishingly led to the emergence of the mafia. And in the final chapter, we look at cognitive biases, glitches in our mental software, in our psychology, and how those affect our behaviour and the course of wars and still today have a profound, deep influence on international relations and diplomacy. So those are just a couple of examples of the stories, of the narratives that I explore in Being Human. They're the, the clickbait from the book, if you like. And I hope that you find reading Being Human as interesting as I found it when I was researching and writing this book. Thank you ever so much.